For someone who doesn't travel that much, the last month or so, I've actually been traveling quite a large amount. And it's actually been a minute since I updated you all on what's in my tech bag. I've got a new bag and a bunch of new stuff. So I think it's time to remake it. And just so you all know, I don't take all of this everywhere with me. A lot of this is kind of depending on the day. But anyway, let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the new bag. And this is the new Pete McKinnon X Nomantic one or Gomatic here in the UK at least. And you probably already see the issue with it and that's I picked the green one. I really like green at the moment, you probably noticed this across my channel, but picking a green bag was a bold choice and I wish I had gone for the black one. The green bag means I can't wear my green coat and a lot of other green stuff, like even here it probably looks a bit silly. All that aside though, this is actually a really good bag and I think I've finally gotten to the point where I'm really happy with it. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I'm super picky with bags. I didn't like the Peak Design one, I didn't like the Wandered one, and this one's as close as it can get. It's got a top access, which I think is one of my favorite features of any bag like this. It's also got side access, so you can grab your camera directly out, and the back completely opens up to get full access. And what this bag does really well is the internal storage. There's no camera cube within a bag, which is something I really grew to hate. This has just got camera dividers and you can basically turn this bag into anything you want. So if you want a full camera bag, you can do that. Or if you want to take loads of it out and just have it as a day pack or something like that, you can do that too, which I really like. It's not the biggest, it's only 18 liters and it's pretty slim as you can probably see here, but I don't carry around a huge amount anymore, especially as I'm not freelancing with camera equipment or anything like that. I'm only ever filming for myself. I can actually make my kit a lot lighter than it was before. There's also plenty of storage for other smaller items and the laptop storage is completely separate to the rest of the bag, which I really, really like. So overall, this is a great bag and I think I'm finally happy with a bag for once. Okay, first thing that goes into the bag will be my computer for the day. And at the moment, that is the M3 MacBook Air. This is a 16 gigabyte variant with a terabyte of storage. And it's actually quite a special one for me because this was given to me for being part of the MacBook Air launch. Um, I'll link the video up here so you can see it. But I went to Apple and they recreated the studio and it was an incredible experience. And getting this MacBook was part of the event. So this is really awesome for me to carry around. And it's way lighter than my MacBook Pro. I was using an M1 Pro before, but this M3 variant in the specs I have it now is completely comparable, especially in terms of video editing and everything like that. There's basically zero difference at all. And it's really, really nice to be so much lighter. Honestly, when I put this in a bag, you can almost barely feel you've got a laptop in there. And surprisingly so, I'm really enjoying working on this thing. The last video I did which was quite a big edit was completely done on this laptop and it didn't stutter or break down or anything at all it's absolutely fine and it didn't even warm up that much either which is crazy I did get it in the midnight color and yes it is still fingerprinty but I think I've said before it's worth the trade-off for me because it's such a good looking computer if I'm taking my MacBook with me, I'll always take the iPad mini because it's so small and light. I just chuck it in and it's good for consuming content and all that sort of stuff or just using it as a second screen. But occasionally on the days where I know things will be a lot lighter or if there's gonna be more kind of iPad focused, then I will take the iPad Pro 12.9. This is just the M1 edition, still absolutely fine for everyday use. And I know Apple are supposed to be updating them soon. So I'll obviously check those out. I never take the keyboard with the iPad Pro anymore though, because the MacBook Air is so small. Attaching the keyboard to this actually makes it bigger and heavier than the MacBook Air and it just seems a bit ridiculous. Next big thing that goes into the bag will be cameras. And this really is heavily dependent, but if I'm doing kind of general stuff where I know I'll need photo and video, then the a7 IV is my camera of choice. This is from Sony. And honestly, it's the camera I recommend to most people that want to get into content or are taking things a little bit more seriously in the photography world. It's a really wonderful camera to use. It's 32 megapixels, it does 4K up to 60. It's got good stabilization and it's just a general all-rounder. Does everything so unbelievably well. If I'm doing video only or having a really heavy kind of video day with some photography, then I'll just take my FX3. That's what's filming me at the moment. And I use this for all of my video work now. Now, it's a really incredible camera. It is a little bit more expensive, but it does it all, does 4K up to 120. It's got loads of picture profiles. It's really good with S-Log and things like that. And if you're kind of getting into video more seriously, I don't think there's a better camera out there for the money, especially with the Sony line of lenses and everything else that it supports. It's just fantastic. It's even used for films now, like the creator and stuff like that. I really don't see how you could go wrong with the FX3, and that's why I love it so much. I also have recently sold my Fujifilm XE4, and I did this because I just wasn't using it enough anymore. And the style of photos I was taking, I was actually getting away with, with my iPhone 15. We actually went away last year, and I used my iPhone 14 at the time, 
take all the photos rather than the Fuji because it was just giving me the results that I wanted. And I'm not suggesting for a second that an iPhone is better than a Fuji. It's not by a long shot, but for things I wanted, it was fine for that. One of the other reasons for selling it as well is because I've decided to go for the X106, which is on order, which who knows when it will arrive. It arrived today while I've been editing this video, so that's exciting to see and obviously that will go straight into my bag as well. And if you're wondering why I'd grab this over the X-E4, I always found with the X-E4 I was trying to think about what lens I should take and what ones I should buy and all that sort of thing. And this is a fixed lens so it will just take all of that thought away from me and I can just get on with taking photos. Talking of lenses, I obviously have a bunch from my Sony and I'll run through those really quickly. I use a Zeiss Batist 25 f2 for this A-roll shot, which is what I'm using at the moment. It's just a nice wide lens. I've also got the 85mm version of that, which is great. A little slow at focusing now, but still a pretty decent lens. I also have this really wonderful Sigma 28-70 to f2.8, which is a really fantastic lens for the money. If I wanted to, I could pretty much run the channel off this lens alone. It's f2.8 all the way through, which means the bokeh stays the same across that zoom range. And it's actually pretty decent at f2.8, especially on a full frame camera. I also have this Tamron 17 to 28, which is a really wide lens. And honestly, I don't like that lens very much, but it serves a utility. But my favorite lens of the lot is one I picked up last year, which is the Sony G Master 50mm f1.4. This is beautiful and clearly the best lens I have by a long shot. The f1.4 just means the bokeh just blurs into oblivion whenever you want it to. And I use it for, I'd say like 85% of all the B-roll you see on this channel. If you ever wonder how I'm getting that dreamy bokeh and depth of field, it's usually always through this Sony G Master lens and it just looks wonderful. Let's talk about some gaming stuff next. And last year I picked up the Nintendo Switch OLED and I have it in this wonderful Animal Crossing case. And I picked this up for Tears of the Kingdom, but I'm actually really happy I did because the OLED upgrade was completely worth it. I ended up playing a lot handheld last year, I pretty much played all of Tears of the Kingdom handheld in the end. And since then it's just been a really wonderful companion to take with me. At the moment I'm playing through Pikmin 4, which is such a beautiful and strange game. Can't really even explain it that well, but it's completely worth playing and I would heavily recommend it. And of course, I haven't forgotten about the MiU Mini Plus. I really love this little thing and I don't play it as much as I should, but if I'm having a bigger day where I don't have space for the Switch, then this one can always slide into a side pocket and give me that little blast of entertainment if I need it. I would also bring up the Steam Deck here because I've had that for a few months now, but not only is it huge and will probably take up most of the bag space, but I don't like it. And maybe I'll make a video about that at some point, but for now it's, I, uh, it's just bad. It's not bad. It's so ugly, but the screen's really nice and it's really powerful and you can play PC games. It runs hot, it makes noise, and so many games don't have run properly or have issues. So that's why I don't have the Steam Deck in my bag or in my life. This next one that actually started as a sponsor, but I've ended up really liking it. And this video isn't sponsored by them, but this is the Moth Snap Stand for iPhone. Basically, it folds out into a mini tripod and then you can use it for kind of anything. And because I've been away a lot recently, I've been using it to help me film reels, I've been using it to take photos, and even using it to do things like take calls or just watch content on the train. So yeah, it kind of surprised me at how much I ended up liking it. The idea of it is you stick it to your phone, but I actually just keep it in my bag and crack it out when I need to. It's so thin and small that I often just keep it in my pocket. And then when I do need it, just slap it onto the phone and bend it out like a tripod. All right, next up, let's talk about power and charging and things like that. I'm still using this Ugreen charger, which just goes directly into the wall and it gives you three USB-C outs and one USB-A out. And it's at 100 watts as well, so it kind of delivers power for absolutely everything. So I can get my MacBook, my camera, my iPhone, my Switch, pretty much anything powered by this thing. And it's really good. It's not too big either. It is quite heavy, but I'm happy to take that trade off for what it does because it's such a useful thing. When it comes to kind of external charging, now I've got two items here, which I use quite a lot. First up is this little or anchor snap-on charger, which I use for my phone. This just snaps on and charges the iPhone wirelessly, and it only gives you about 50 to 60% of power, but it also acts as like a mini stand as well, so you can watch something or, you know, use your iPhone while it's charging, which I quite like. And the other thing I have is the Shah Geek Storm 2 Slim power adapter. And I must admit, I don't use this that much. It's kind of like my emergency situation if I need to charge up my laptop or my phone or anything like that when I don't have access to a plug socket, but it's 20,000 milliamp hours, so I get a decent charge out of it whenever I need it. It also looks really cool too. It's got this kind of transparent colorway, which just looks great. And that slides into the bag as well. Moving on to wires and all that sort of thing, because I actually have loads and this is all kept within this little low pro case. Now I was using a native union one before, but it was actually like surprisingly heavy on its own and a really kind of bulky package overall. So I just 
didn't use it in the end because I didn't like it. And this low pro one is a lot more kind of malleable. You kind of stretch it out a little bit as well. And it's got lots of nice places to hold things. So I open up, you can see there's a bunch of stuff in there. So I'll run for it really quickly. First up are these Rode wireless mics. You may have seen me using these a bit like this in a lot of videos recently. And they're really good for when you're out and about or on the move, or if you're making short form content, it means you can hold the mic quite close to you and talk quite quietly, which I find quite useful when I'm in a public space because I don't like presenting out in the wild. It just feels kind of weird. I've also got a dongle here because now I'm back on the MacBook Air. Unfortunately, I do need a dongle. And this one is from Satechi and it matches the color almost of the midnight colorway which is really nice and it gives you pretty much all the ports back you could ever need which is great underneath there is just a bunch more wires and chargers i do have this backup drive from kingston usb-c two terabytes and it transfers at really really fast speeds which is awesome i've got my magsafe wire for the macbook air which is useful and a bunch of other usb-c cables and this little camera tool which is useful for doing anything camera related or attaching anything to the camera that's what i'll carry when it comes to wires and adapters and things like that Carrying on from there is something I'm trying to push myself to do more of this year, and that's to read a little bit more. Now, I'm still reading through Harry Potter, which I know is horribly basic of me, but I've also started reading Dune, which is probably really basic of me as well, because Dune's out at the moment. But it has been nice to sit and read before I go to bed rather than go on my phone, which is something I used to do a lot and still do sometimes, to be honest. But yeah, enjoying this a lot at the moment. This is just a standard Kindle, which has now got a backlight, which is decent. And considering how much they cost, which is about 60 to 70 pounds, what you get in return is actually completely worth it. The fact that this can hold so many books in such a small space is kind of awesome. And this just slides into the laptop part of my bag and it's really not heavy at all. That rounds out kind of the main sections of the bag, but there are some kind of like fun little extras which I always throw into a bag every time I get one. First up is the emergency SD card. I always keep this in a bag somewhere in case I ever go out and forget an SD card. So I've always got one on me. I'm trying to find it now, there it is. And it's kind of like a penalty card because it doesn't do everything that my normal cards can do as a sort of reminder of don't forget your card, otherwise you'll have to use this one. So always keep one of those in my pack. I keep an AirTag hidden in one of the pockets as well, so I can keep track of it if it does end up getting stolen or if I lose it or something silly like that. I also keep some business cards in here in case I ever need to give any out, which we ended up doing recently, which was cool because it's very rare that actually happens. I also keep a selection of pens and something like the Apple Pencil in the top there as well. And finally, I got a new water bottle and a new coffee cup recently. And you're probably gonna see another issue when I hold these up which is why I can't use it with this bag it's it's green as well so when I put that in there and if I'm wearing green I would look like this giant bogey which is just not worth it so that's a shame so <laughs> I do I do really like this Yeti bottle and I do take it with me but I tend not to kind of couple it with this bag ever so much and for a coffee cup as well I actually picked up the Yeti one again in green sometimes I'll dangle this from somewhere like that or you know like I'll use a carabiner to hold it on there almost like you're going camping or something but again it's green why did I get the green one? Also, one of the last things I'll slide into the bag if we are going away for a weekend or something like that is a couple of watches as well. I started to really enjoy watches recently and something I needed to show you, I finally managed to get an official moon swatch from the London store, which I'm really happy about. This is the Mission to Jupiter version and it's just wonderful. It's way better than the fake I had before. But yeah, occasionally I'll take a few watches with me as well. To round out this video, I wanted to talk about my EDC as well, but I will link the full video below if you want a bit more detail, because I'm just gonna blast through it. Still using the iPhone 15 Pro Max, absolutely love this thing. It's beautiful in the natural titanium. The camera's great, the screen's great, the battery's great. All my friends and family use an iPhone, makes sense for me to be there, really, really like it. For headphones, I'm still using my AirPods Pro. Wouldn't change these for the world, really, because they work so seamlessly with all my devices. And this version two sounds way better than the version one, which is quite surprising, but absolutely loving those. I still have my Sony XM4s. I haven't got rid of them yet. I still don't like them, but I just don't take them anywhere with me because these do such a fantastic job. For a wallet, I'm using the Carhartt Pocket with an AirTag attached to it so I can keep track of it all the time. And for my keys, I'm still using the Orbit Key key organizer to keep them all kind of together. And lastly, for the EDC items, I don't wear an Apple Watch at all anymore. I've actually moved over to standard watches and I've got a little bit of a collection at the moment. But if you want more details, make sure you do go and watch that video. But anyway, that wraps up my tech bag for this year. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any items you think I should check out or if you're using any kind of bags or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. Always love to hear what you have to say. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.